Welcome to Bitcoin Basics with your hosts, Faris and Gordon. Visit bitcoinbasics.help if you need help buying and securing your Bitcoin. For anyone listening, this episode is visually intensive, so visit bitcoinbasics.help for all our video platforms. We use TradingView, which is free to set up an account for all our charts. So check out our Bitcoin recommended products and services while you're at bitcoinbasics.help. An episode of Bitcoin and Markets. So we're looking at the week that was, the week that ended on the 25th of July. And what we're going to be looking at today is... We'll look at BTC first and foremost, Ethereum, Ethereum versus BTC and Binance. We will also be looking at some currencies, commodities and indices, um, the US dollar, US oil, the Dow Jones, industrial average, silver and gold. But let's first start off with Bitcoin. So we are looking at a weekly chart at the moment. We had a good week in Bitcoin. The main thing to keep in mind is that $30,000 basically held big round number. We did through that, um, but we never closed below. As a matter of fact, um, I am recording just 20 minutes after the weekly close on this chart. So if you're looking at the chart here, you see this nice big white candle there. That just formed 20 minutes ago, and I'm really happy with that. Um, you can see the indicator that I'm applying here is a double Bollinger Band. So Bollinger Bands are really good to use for breakouts and breakdowns. They kind of show you when markets are overextended um, and due for a recovery or a breakdown. Um, so about what? So back early June, uh, we went along this candle here, um, 7th of June, because that was a really nice candle. Same thing as today. Um, it dipped to just short of 31,000 and closed higher. Um, I'm actually more positive about this week's candle. Why is that? Because we closed above this Bollinger Band here. So I'm trading a double Bollinger Band, which basically means, as you can see, these are the deviations from the average. And we've been trading inside these two bands here. Um, so that's one standard deviation. This lower band down here is two standard deviations. We've been trading inside that since May, 17th of May. So it's quite a long period. This weekly candle, 30,000 held, and we have broken above this inside Bollinger Band. So that is a trading signal for me to go long. And it's really good that we've consolidated for a long time. Um, I don't really use the RSI to trade. I use it more to get out of trades and get into trades, but the RSI was pretty low down here, and this is on a weekly chart. So if we want to zoom out, look at why Bollinger Bands can be really good. Um, in here, you can see that it kind of, I mean, we just had this huge 18-month um, consolidation in Bitcoin where it just so flat, and this is on a weekly basis, that things just were so tight together. Um, so look, it's... This is not where you would go, wow, this looks amazing, trend reversal. It's just, we may just consolidate for a bit longer. But right now, to me, this is a good opportunity to go long because you have really good stop losses below 30,000. Big round number, and it's held quite well. And just, it never closed below. I mean, the lowest close we got was 31,600. So if you were to put a stop loss below 30,000, you're long here. You've got really good upside to your limited downside. The other thing that we want to keep in mind is the Bitcoin Dominance Index. We've looked at this the last few episodes. We identified the low, we're nearing the lowest lows for the Bitcoin Dominance Index. If you don't know what that is, this is um, the amount of money going into Bitcoin versus other cryptos. Uh, we, are, we are very, very close to the all-time lows of 35, 41, and 39. We never got to the second all-time low, and we've bounced since, and we are performing this ascending right-angle triangle. So if we break above this flat line here, which is at 48%, if we break above that, then um, that we could see a very, very good run developing. Uh, on a daily chart, it's even more convincing. You just see how tight that that running wedge is there. So we break above 48%. We hold above 35.5 for this week. Um, 
I'd say we're looking really, really good. Um, because with Bitcoin, people are always trying to buy the dips, get the lows, but you can't catch falling knives. So if people saw, okay, I missed my opportunity to buy low, I'm just going to get in. Um, that basically will be a really good indicator that, okay, this market's over. And we even had a little bounce on volume today. Um, so that is, we haven't seen that for a month now. We've had higher volume on a breakout. So look, not 100% convincing, but that's what you need now. We've had a lot of FOMO in the markets, a lot of um, billionaires, investors co um, coming in, going out. Um, but the story's in the charts. So it's looking good now. Um, this is what you want. You want to, you know, I mean, this huge run-up that we had in the first six months um, of this year. Um, sorry, in six months leading into this year. Um, it just needs a pause. And I thought we'd paused here, but obviously no. We had a good sell-off. And this is what Bitcoin does. It you know, gets people in near the top and then scares them out. And then it goes back to all-time highs, rinse and repeat. So that's Bitcoin. We're looking quite positive here. So I would be holding longs and I would be having stop losses below 30,000. Again, just to reiterate at uh, bitcoinbasics.help, all we recommend is um, stacking your sats. So just buy on a weekly basis, monthly basis, just whatever you can afford and don't look at the charts. So it's easier um, to just do that. Then you're not worried about these long-term price fluctuations. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share so we can find others like yourself. Let's look at Ethereum. Um, so Ethereum, not as clean a chart. This is, yeah, look, this is not really classical pattern of a right angle descending triangle. If we broke below 1700, then we're in trouble for Ethereum, I'd say. Honestly, you're kind of squinting to make this pattern. Um, any classical charts would say that it's not really a healthy pattern that I'm coming up with here. You're kind of just trying to make it work. Um, yeah, not not very pretty. Um, but look, it could potentially be there. So if we, yeah, same with Ethereum, it looks like we're on a, a potential breakout here. This level at 1740 has held quite, or 1730, sorry, has held pretty well. Um, if we revisit that, then potentially we're getting lower. But yeah, we'd want to break out here to confirm that the um, secular bull market in Ethereum is continuing. Ethereum versus BTC looks not as strong. So this is where instead of holding Ethereum versus the US dollar, you're holding Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So you think Ethereum is going to go up compared to Bitcoin. Um, if that dominance chart proves us right then this won't be as strong a pattern as btc versus usd on a daily basis this is a nice looking um uh, triangle here so we've had the five points of contact so if we break above this and yep we're going up if we break below we're going down so that's ethereum versus btc so the other things we wanted to look at were um binance so Binance, and this is what I mean by using a double Bollinger Band, really, really tight here. This is a daily chart. So if we break above this line here, um, 317 and hold on a daily chart, potentially we're going a lot higher. Uh, if we zoom out to a weekly basis, we never close below this lower Bollinger Band. So we're trading inside the standard deviation. But however, you can see it's just so wide. Look how narrow it is way back here in 2020. It's so wide. So potentially this could just trade sideways for a bit longer just to, you know, stabilize a little bit more. Um, but we have had a couple of higher lows. And these are, you know, this is a pretty nice last week's candle. It was a pretty decent looking candle, actually. It would be nice to close. Above the high, but 300, um, we have not closed below 300 on Binance uh, in the last four weeks. So potentially that is the low for Binance, and we're heading back up towards the 500 level. Okay, another really good one last week was oil. So this is US oil, um, which is. Um, 
had this inverse head and shoulders. This was the crazy stuff of last year when oil actually went negative. Um, that was basically due to speculation in the futures market and people could not accept delivery, so they'd pay someone else to take their oil um, to store it. Uh, we had this inverse head and shoulders, really, really nice. And yet last week's candle was a really nice candle. So if we look at this pin bar here, uh, we took out stop losses and just went straight up. So I actually would be long oil here with a stop loss below there, which is at 6460. Um, so this to me is a really good opportunity to be long oil because we the last line of support was here at 77 and we've already um, tapped that. So to me, oil is actually a really good opportunity to be long right now. I quite like this chart. That's one I'd be long. Uh, let's look at gold. Gold has just been messy. Um, we had this really nice breakout of this downward um, channel here. People thought, yep, we're going long um, there. And then we broke out. That's it. We're going long. But then, man, we just had a nasty, nasty sell off um, a few weeks ago. And it's just struggling since. So I uh, don't know what to make of gold right now. Um, the only thing I would look at, and this is, again, <laughs> really, really squinting to make this one work, is a long-term cup and handle, and that is just ugly. That is, if you are, you know, if you used to look at those 3D, um, 3D posters where you have to squint beyond the poster to see what the image is, you could say that's the argument here. So I'm not seeing a pattern for gold. Um, silver looks a bit more clear cut. We've got this uh, same thing ascending um, right angle triangle where if we break and hold above 28.28 for silver, that's looking pretty healthy because we have these series of higher lows leading up to this line of resistance here. So silver actually does look better than gold at this stage. Uh, let's move over to currencies. So the DXY, so this is the dollar versus a composite. Um, mostly it's the euro, the pound, and the yen. Um, DXY itself, look, it's not forming any trends as far as I see. Um, it's not forming any classical patterns. It's kind of like a W shape, which I don't know. It's not one I'm familiar. Um, I'd have to look that one up. Or a double top, as they'd say, which is not really tradable. It's just... A sign. Um, I had a look at a few different um, crosses. The only one to me that looked convincing was the Australian, the Australian versus the US dollar, and that broke below this key level here of 75 cents. Um, so it it's formed a, a nice topping pattern here. And yeah, if I would like us to go back up just a little bit to retest 75, and then if we come down, I'd be short the Aussie, I'd be selling the Australian dollar versus the US. So that to me is as far as trading against US dollar, it's the best looking setup that I can see is the Australian versus the US. Bit extended now, we would have, you know, it would have been good to get into this trade a couple weeks ago, probably a bit late now, so I'd wait for um, a bounce. And the other thing I want to look at was the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So indices are making all-time highs, and it is insane when you think that even though like we saw this sell-off due to COVID where you know stock markets went down what 50%, almost 50%, and they've doubled since. Doesn't make sense, um, but it's still going up. Um, the only reason you can say is that governments are handing out money to people and people are just trading stocks. So we've just created um, some day traders in the market here. Um, but yeah, look, Dow Jones Industrial Average, we are closing at all-time highs. So to me, this one is worth going along as well. And you've got this nice big pin bar where you'd have a stop loss down here at 33,500. So that again, like oil, is just a nice clean setup. So that's what we're looking at today. Some interesting times in the markets ahead. Um, yeah, Bitcoin, we really do want 35500 to hold. And for the week, um, if the Bitcoin dominance index goes above 48%, that's a nice confirmation as well. And the only other really good setups I'm liking right now is long oil and long the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which, again, fundamental reason makes no sense, but 
the story is in the charts. So thank you for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, subscribe and share so we can spread this educational content to others like yourself. Visit bitcoinbasics.help. Disclaimer. Any content provided by Coin Compass is for educational and informational purposes only and is not investment, legal, tax, or any other professional advice. A qualified professional should be consulted before making any financial decisions. Coin Compass will at times recommend certain products, services, and technologies, but these are opinions based upon our own or podcast guests' experience and not endorsements. We take no liability for out of date or inaccurate information, software bugs, manufacturing errors, technology misuse, or issues involving third parties. Visit coincompass.com for more information and please contact us.